I studied world politics at university. Um, I ended up majoring in Japanese. I was fluent by the time I was 22. I did two exchanges. Uh, I thought I was meant to become a translator. I was actually meant to learn how to understand the human heart beyond language, culture, and borders. So for me, I launched into my career first as a manager, ended up getting a few manager roles, and all I cared about was developing staff members. I cared about the dynamics of the team. I cared about creating an environment where people could thrive and ended up reaching the ceiling with the owner. If anyone else here has been employed, I found that the love I was vesting into my team was often undermined by the owner herself. Uh, that ticked me up sufficiently that I wanted to start doing my own thing. I trained as a life coach. Um, <laughs> it was like 2008, uh, 2008, so it feels like a very long time ago, 11 years ago. Um, but my background was in weight loss. So I think as coaches, there's always something that we've transformed in our own personal lives. That was an area of experience for me. So I specialized there and I ended up specializing in eating disorders for six years and really loved um, being able to devote myself to an individual and look in with love on their situation in a way that was compassionate and caring to help them start to unpack some of what had happened in their own lives. And lo and behold, time and time again, I found trauma. I found unmet needs. I found a misunderstanding of the truth of who they were in a way that contaminated their view of themselves. So um, for me, I realized that after six years, I wasn't coaching anymore. I was trained on the ICF model of question only based coaching. And I definitely wasn't doing that anymore. My personal style started leaning towards some sort of an intuitive, I would share information that I could sense and feel. And that was no longer appropriate within the boundaries and the construct of coaching. So I actually came out as a healer that was, five years ago now and released my first book, Heart Healing, The 13 Principles of Emotional Self-Healing and wanted to get away from a symptomatic approach to problems where people focus on, on what was manifesting. Like for my clients, it was eating disorders, binge eating, you know, self-denial, emotional eating and really look at the cause with them. And I wanted to serve a clientele who were consciously prepared to look at what had actually happened. So for the first time in my career, after being in business for six years, I was finally fully booked. Uh, I had referral clients. I had clients coming to me um, after reading my book saying, I'm ready to do this work. I know you're the person for me. And I had really struggled in business for the first six years. You know, I managed to pay myself a couple of hundred bucks each week as like my pinnacle. So helping people was not as easy as I thought it was going to be. I, I honestly thought that people would be more invested. And what I really learned was I needed to share my heart as, as, as a professional with a past story. And I had to teach in a way that's almost assumptive teaching, if that makes sense to anyone here. I had to presume what I knew they needed to know and actually teach them, but I was actually verifying myself as their unique expert, that by exposing my own heart, my own background, I could actually be somebody where they said, ah, she gets me, she's been there, ah, she's out of it, can you get me out of it? And so what I'm presenting here has come from a journey of, you know, doing the eating disorder niche for six years, really then having an emotional healing niche for three years. You know, by the third year, I started having other healers and coaches who came to me and said, can you help me see into my situation? And I, I, was, I thought it was a huge privilege because I had wanted to do that, but I didn't know how you got accredited to get there to be that person. And I find the Rumi quote, what you seek is seeking you, that when you really have a longing and a passion for something, people can feel it in you. So they started asking me for help with the nitty gritty, yucky, hard, the really tricky stuff that no one else could kind of tap on. I just happen to be really good at that really heavy, <laughs> hard stuff. Yay. Hey, it's like, yeah, that's just what I'm good at in this life. Uh, but for business guidance and 
what happened for me was for the first time in my career, I could devote myself to individuals that were devoted to individuals. And that um, has really been incredibly fulfilling. So I did that all of last year and this year, that's the only work that I do. All of my clients and our business owners, and they range from natural health therapists, massage therapists, nat naturopaths, um, energy workers, energy healers, right across to um, coaches and kind of anybody in the personal development market that have some sort of, I, they, they're to guide you or always one-on-one -on -one work. A few of my clients do group work, but I primarily focus on one-on-one -on -one work because that's where I have 10 years of experience. And I, I, get, I get the underbelly of that. And today I'm excited to guide you over an overview to help you to understand how you can reflect what is happening in those internal workings in your business so that you're not having to put on an entirely different brain in order to represent and, and share that out in the world. For me, if we can take the inner workings and reflect them out, my trick and hack is to always share the content with my tribe that I said in my most recent client appointment. So if I'm on Instagram riffing about something, that will have just come up in my previous client appointment. I do no content creation. I just listen to what I say to my clients, if that makes sense. So I feel a little bit gushy. I don't, I'm naturally this exuberant and excited this is my, this is norm. I peak higher than this. I'll try not to do that today, but I think I want you all to understand that my passion and excitement today comes from a, a huge girl crush on Beth, an amazing um, sense of respect and awe for what she wants to create and a huge appreciation for all of you because I can't in this time really receive your background and your story, but I know that what you will have walked through in order to simply be here is mammoth and epic. And I just want to salute every one of you for walking through what you have to get here. And for me, I love helping people to prosper on purpose. Making money as a coach is almost like kryptonite to someone who wants to help. We feel weird about asking for payment. We feel weird about promoting ourselves. I want to take all that weirdness away <laughs> and I want to make it fun and light. And my inner child definitely leads my marketing and she leads my public representation. So if you can feel her like right on my chest, like she'll be puppeteering me for this whole show. Sorry, I'm just clapping and excited. It's okay. Um, so, um, really, really excited. If anyone is joining now and hasn't introduced yourself, um, please tell me your speciality. That will really help me. I have probably never done an introduction where I've shared so much of my personal family background, um, but I wanted to do that for you guys so that you can see where I'm coming from. Checking, raise of hands. I know, Barbie, we don't have you on camera, but do you have the PDF guide that Beth sent through? Just checking to see. Okay. Okay, wonderful, great, wonderful. So what I'm gonna do is, you've basically got the notes for what I'm gonna share. I'm not gonna read through that. I'm gonna go through and talk about these three aspects. Really, really important. And I want you to, um, this is probably only gonna be 10 minutes of going into it, and then I'm gonna leave 30 minutes so that you can ask me questions, and we can turn on your mic, and you can share anything that you want to, and I really wanna, you know, for me, that's workshop time, because if you can't apply this, or if you can't interweave it into your specific situation, then I don't think it's that valuable. So that's the way I like to teach and lead. One of the biggest things, um, uh, really remembering that the truth of who you are is at the center of your business. And a lot of us tend to see our website as an asset or, you know, we think our copy is really important. And for me, I go, you are the most important asset in your business. And everything actually is an emanation from you, from your essence, from your background, from your own personal passion and purpose. So for me, my hack is to hijack business as a vehicle for you to be who you are in this world. So my approach and my mentoring work 
is to draw out who you really are and support you to feel so loved and safe that you feel confident to share that with the external world because I have a super tender heart and when people don't like me, I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you first? Second, what's not to like? Like, come on. But the, the truth is that for every person that will adore you, you'll have someone that is just irritated by the sound of your voice. And I swear, if we can't repel, we will not attract. And for me, the more I can just expose the truth of who I am, I do not take it personally, whether people resonate with me or not. And when people really do vibe with me, Beth and I have an amazing connection. We both girl crush on each other. We look up to each other. And I go, what that does is that it embeds love, trust, and this incredible union or partnership. And for me, that is what makes my work so fun is every one of my clients is handpicked and I personally get behind their mission and, and adore them. So we're going to be talking about mechanics. And I said to my husband, I'm like, I want to talk about the mechanics of transformation, but it's so masculine. And he's like, well, honey, it's kind of not because you're talking about the components and how they work together. And I said, that's really what I want to talk about. So I hope that mechanics isn't too much of a masculine angle. But for me, I feel like I've been studying the art of transformation my whole life and I'm obsessed with it. So let's look at these three elements. One, tribe alignment. Two, authentic leadership. Three, partnership agreement. Okay, so with tribe alignment, like I said before, you have to be prepared to repel so that you can attract. And it's, it's uncomfortable for us, but one of the ways that I like to really look at marketing or authentic marketing is to remember that in order to earn the sacred privilege of serving clients, I need to do work in the world. And I see marketing as my free teaching. Hello, this is my soapbox. Welcome to the Lisi Show. Today, I'm going to be riffing at you and telling you the way I think the world should be. And you can take that or leave that. But my tribe love it. And they want to hear from someone who's got some hacks and some, some shortcuts and some inspiring ways to look at things. So I tick enough people off that they leave. And then the people that actually love me show up. And then I get celebrated. I think for a business owner, definitely from our backgrounds, what we really want in the world is to be who we really are and be celebrated. So with this first one, tribe alignment, a lot of the marketing that I hear, clients will often come to me pre-programmed with an approach to marketing and I have to kind of deconstruct it a bit for them because we're taught to come up with an avatar, we're taught to create this imaginary person that we design our copy and our offers to. I really encourage my clients to set that aside and actually reflect on anyone who is ever gonna hire you as only ever a sacred reflection of who you are. And if they are not in resonance with the truth of who you are, by gosh, that's gonna be hard work. And who's been with a client who's hard work because we're trying to be everything they need? Yeah, I sing. I sing sometimes because it's fun. And when we try to become what they need, we disempower ourselves. We minimize the medicine within our essence. And we're actually doing ourselves a disservice because if that person likes us and they tell someone about us and we're in a position that's hard to hold, so you only want to work with people who are a reflection of who you are. And for me, my hack for marketing is to look back and be like, which Lisi from my past am I devoted to serving in my business right now? There was a point in my career where I literally wasn't sleeping well because I was so concerned about where my clients were coming from. I would worry and I would overthink. And there was a stage in my business where my marketing really specifically helped that Lisi. I helped her learn practical steps. I, I taught her how to own her truth. I taught her how to showcase her soul and get over whether people didn't like it or not. But she progressed on from that and she actually needed to really specialize in a particular area and actually really start to be a master teacher on that area. 
I want you to think about who you were in the past and remember that your tribe are only ever a reflection of you. And if you tailor everything you're doing in your business, and I would go like put it in a six month or a year bracket. So currently my business is tailored towards my Lisi from maybe one to two years ago. And she was committed to business. She was never going to work for anyone else. She knew she had something valuable, but she needed to be a bit more brave sharing her soul gold in order to be um, able to hand pick the best clients. She'd already been fully booked, but she wanted to make sure she was getting the right people because 70% of my new clients are now referral clients. So I'm still out there teaching and preaching, but that's not where people find me. People will hear about me through someone else and then they'll land on my content and it's a gold mine and it's rich and it speaks to their hearts and they go, yes, she's the one. So that's what I'm doing right now. And that's, I guess, where I'm really focusing myself. If you want to think about who that person is and narrow it in, okay, that is the most profound way because someone will be floating out in the world and then they'll land on your content. And if you're speaking directly to your own heart, like my messaging moves me, like I say to my clients, if you're not crying from your own soul sharing and your own marketing and your own business showcasing, you need to rethink that. So this year I am preaching chariots for change. I want my clients to use their business to make a difference in the world. And I will be preaching that all year long. And that means the world to me. Uh, it literally evokes joy in my heart. So tribe alignment is so, so important for you to really get a powerful connection because you will only get transformation when they respect you, admire you, and, and feel like you get them. They are prerequisite, okay? So the second one is something I'm sure you are all already doing, that if we teach principles without personal experience, we are walk and talk and memes and ain't no one like a walk and talk and meme. They're annoying, just be positive, you can do it. You know, um, what's that, oh, it's darkest before dawn, that annoys me. I go, and have you been in that disgusting, hideous place in your life? Because if you haven't, I don't want you preaching no darkest before the dawn. Don't be telling me the light's coming because I already want the earth to swallow me up and eat me whole at this point. So. For me, I do not respect anyone in a leadership position in business who is not utilizing their own life experience to teach and lead, okay? You can feel there's a bit of vigor behind that. Um, but once again, take from this what you will and see what resonates for you. The third point is probably the most important. Sometimes we see our client, our, the people that we serve as our clients they are people who we serve, who are investing in the transformation. And that's not how I see them. I, I, I like to see them as my partner, my co-conspirator. I want to say, okay, everyone in the world, this is what I think is the most important thing for me, hijacking business. So people prosper on purpose and utilize their gifts and their life experience to bless others. That's all I care about. If you don't want that, you are not going to want to work with me. And let's partner together because Beth knows that as passionate and committed as she is to what's important, I will match her investment. Okay. Now, one of the most damaging things that we can do in a business is say, I can help anyone. Who else was naive and once said, I can help anyone? Raise of hands if in your first year of business you said, I can help anyone. <laughs> you giggle it. <laughs> yeah, you go, oh, everyone needs conscious parenting coaching. Like everyone needs a parent coach. Like every family will benefit from, from family coaching. Like you really think that. And it's true. Everyone in the world could benefit from what you share, but can everyone receive it? And can they receive it from you? And that's a big fat no. Unfortunately, if people do not have a res reserve of emptiness and capacity to receive in their hearts, in their inner worlds, in their lives, 
They will be hard work for you. They will make you feel like you're not making a difference. And, and you'll work harder for them than they are for you. And that is a misaligned partnership. And I know because I did it. I did it. I worked harder for my clients than they were working for themselves. And I have learned through experience. So these things all combined together only serve your tribe. You will reach them in a way that no one else has. A lot of people will say to me, oh, there's so many people riffing about this. Like your feeds will be filled with conscious parenting content. Do you know what I mean? When you go to your Facebook feed or your YouTube homepage, you guys will be, you know, really chowing down on some conscious parenting, family dynamic, rich content. That's not what the world is doing. And what I say is that your tribe need you. There is no one else that can teach and preach the way that you can. So the partnership agreement is about really narrowing in on what do I need? So one of the agreements that I have for people considering hiring me is they need to tell me the truth because I can feel it. And if they can't speak it, I can't actually help them. I need people who are willing to sacrifice the time, energy, and money in order to receive a transformation. So if our price point doesn't reflect the quality of the transformation that we're offering, we're not actually equipping our clients to comprehend the importance of what they're engaging in. Okay. So I see I'm at time. <laughs> um, if I can just finish <laughs> um, on this little graph. I'm not the best at making graphs. It's not, it's not my forte, but I really wanted to make one. I'm going to share my screen so we're all looking at the same thing. And don't judge me for my desktop. I'm, I kind of keep a few things. I'm one of those people. Um, but I will open up and let's have a little bit of a look at this because Remember, your truth is in the center here, the truth of who you are. But for me, there's, you know, these three categories for our marketing. Your presence and your ability to soul teach is one. Your niche specialization, you need to be saying, this is who I work with. Remember, you're just describing yourself. This is why. This is what we're going to do. Tell them everything. Because people do not hire you for the information. They hire you for personalization. Okay. No one's making money off content anymore. Nobody's making money off wisdom. There's so much free information. People are investing in the time and space and guidance to actually apply. It's about execution. Another part of your business is your, your operations or your client service. So for me, it's really important to think about what I call mirror marketing. What you're doing in your business, like I tell everyone, Mondays is my invoicing day. I don't um, have my clients prepay. When my clients book in, they pay for their appointment in the week of their appointment. I tell people that I do this because I want to give them insight into my business. That's often why some people have hired me because I don't actually have contracts and agreements with set terms. I trust that I remain fully booked because people get what they want, when they want, how they want. So. These are the things that I want you to think about showcasing. If you find yourself really passionate about something from a client appointment, literally go live on Facebook or YouTube and just share that goal with your online tribe because it's already sitting on your heart. For me, these are big values for me in business to lead with integrity. If you are not living what you're preaching in business, you'll continually be afraid of being found out. So the, the first person to be applying your content is yourself, and I trust and know you're all doing that. For me, you have to lead your tribe before they've invested, and that's why I share my best content with people that haven't even agreed to work with me yet because they want to know what they're getting into. People don't want to sign up for anything anymore unless they really understand what it is. And, and tell them the truth. I think sometimes we don't want to share exactly what we do because we're afraid people will poke holes in it. I go, let them poke holes in it because then they won't be your people. But your authentic soul truth is at the heart of this. And with these three elements, if you're just allowing that to be shared in everything that you do, that is where you're going to attract people who are committed, ready, prepared, who love you, that are going to get the most amazing results from your work.